Nowhere is the want of material, or properly described and figured material at least, more felt than in trying to restore the head of this creature. So what do we have? Well, 80% of the skull, apparently. They found it disarticulated, the bones were spread out over a 10 square meter area, I'm sure it was a huge pain to recover. But we have a partial maxilla, that's the upper jawbone, the upper half-ish of the eye socket and eyebrow, a complete brain case, which has had a detailed description, as has the inside of it, the endocranium. We have both quadrates, which are at the back of the head, and the front of the dentary, the, the chin. Now, from research mentioning the material and from museum displays of known versus unknown bits, we also have a partial premaxilla, which is the tip of the snout, partial nasal or, or nasals, which is the top of the snout, and the rear end of the lower jaw, where it hinges against the upper part of the skull. So how we fit those pieces together and restore the missing pieces is open to some interpretation. Reconstructions tend to cluster around two poles. I call them boxy carnosaur and notched triangle. Boxy carnosaur has a high snout with a relatively blunt tip, a nice straight tooth row, and the back of the head is closer to straight up and down. It winds up looking a lot like Acroganthosaurus. The notched triangle look is what we see in the Mariodano reconstruction and most mounted Giganotosaurus skeletons in museums, which I think are based on Odano's reconstruction. This has a very squashed snout with a very long premaxilla on the front, a really snarled looking <laughs> maxilla where at the back of the tooth row there's like this upturn and the back of the head is much more slanted. Now, you might be tempted to say, well, the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? It's maybe, but it's much, much closer to the boxycarnosaur acrocanthosaurus reconstruction.